Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Raggedy Pack, getting into episode four of season five, Game of Thrones. It's been a few days since our last session, which was the High Sparrow episode, where we got introduced to the High Sparrow. What? A few days. (laughs) It's, It's a generic statement. Okay. We would have watched last night, but you were a tired boy. It's all right. Uh, in, in the last episode, Sansa met Ramsay, right? Uh huh. Her that's soon to be yep. betrothed. Mm, Her soon to be betrothed. That's a that's a that's a thought. Jorah back from the archives of Igly's brain kidnapped Tyrion after he almost made love to someone in a brothel, but he said he couldn't. <laughs> Very a man of integrity now. It's come Mm -hmm. a long way. Um, I want to say John beheaded Janice Slint. Thank God. May he rest in misery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Skimming through here. Arya did not dispose of Needle, but disposed of everything else Mm -hmm. into the water. John named Alistair First Ranger. Brienne said she'd train Podrick. And Marjorie and Tom, I guess, um, no consummated comment. their marriage. No comment. So, good episode all around. Igly, anything been burning your brain since then? Uh, you know, I had 11 days to kind of think about it. But really, <laughs> the last episode was pretty damn wild. Janice getting finally executed was very much a treat it was still very it it was still a shocking and surprising act but again it's something we talked about in like great depths just john setting the tone going forward he's the big man uh but yeah fantastic episode need to know what jorah's gonna do with my boy Tyrion. hopefully they can work out their disagreements or i guess not necessarily disagreements but the misunderstandings Ah, uh, but Jorah seems like he's in a sorry state. He might be doing he, whatever possible to get back into Danny's good graces. And that is not a good look. I don't think I, I'm, 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 I'm a little bit uh, concerned where that road is going to lead us. But and knowing the show, it, it might not have a happy end. But that's about it. Okay. Uh, I'm really excited to get into the second half of this season. So, unless you have mm-hmm. anything else, you ready to go? I am ready. Let's go. All right. Well, before we do, hit that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss when these go live. But if you just remember they go live every Sunday, you don't need the noti bell, but it'd still be rough, your best friend in case you forget. We also have up to four weeks early access available on our Patreon right now. Link in the description below for that. There's also full links over there and early access to other series as well. And a link to join our free Discord is with the link to the Patreon and links to our socials all down below. Check that out. Let's get into the Sons of the Harpy. Let's do it. Lego. They should have had a little diorama of John executing <laughs> Janice. You know, the track record for someone executing another person so far has always led to death, so that's not a good look. We got Ned. Joffrey, kinda. Wasn't his hand, but still. Rob. Theon's still kinda cooking, but maybe it's drawn out more because he was whacking multiple times as opposed to clean. Danny and John are still good, but only time will tell. Who's this? Oh, why is the camera so shaky? Oh! oh. FPV? Well, that man's wet. It's probably gonna... Okay. He might die, brother. I don't know if two gold coins is enough for the ship. Oh! <laughs> God, he's not being gentle. Threw him like luggage. Oh, we're sailing to Dorne. Hmm. The Sapphire Isle. The Dornish are crazy. All they want to do is fight and fight and fight. You should be happy to go back. Our trucks. <laughs> now we're gonna be doing a lot of fighting, I'm sure. Well, I am, but I don't imagine we'll get to stick around for the rest. 
Not after we've kidnapped their princess. We're not kidnapping their princess. That's a... <laughs> We're rescuing my niece, bringing her back to her family. Well, that's Your both niece. statements are true. Your niece. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a call out. Mm hmm. You set your brother free, didn't you? I bet your sister didn't like that. Whipped. Set him free. If you ever see the way, give him my regards. He murdered my father. If I ever see him, I'll split him in two. Okay. And then I'll give him your regards. That's how we're. This is how we're feeling. Okay. The Iron Bank has called in one tenth of the Crown's debt. House Tyrell could front the gold and the, the crown would pay us back in time or, or I'd have words with my daughter. No one's <laughs> laughing, brother. <laughs> no, we must arrange better terms with the Iron Bank. Absolutely. In person. Me? We must send an envoy to the Iron Bank, someone of importance, to show these bankers our respect. As the king's master of coin, I can think of no one more qualified. I would okay. be honored, your grace. The king's expressed concern about his father-in-law's safety on this voyage. He's ordered Samarin to personally lead your escort. Okay, yeah. My very own king's guard. Surely Jesus. he'll be fine. He travels, Lord Tyrell. Of course. I'll give your regards to the titan of Bravos. <laughs> that man's dying. Uh huh. Yeah, he's definitely Small died. Council grows smaller and smaller. Not small enough. <laughs> Shade. Sent by cell too. In the days before the Targaryens, the Faith Militant dispensed the justice of the Seven. Well, the Faith Militant was disarmed more than two centuries ago. Are we making crusaders? I explain their holy purpose to my son, the King. I have no doubt he will sign a decree arming the believers you felt worthy. What would you say if I told you of a great sinner in our very midst, shielded by gold and privilege? Who are we talking about? May the about? father judge him justly. We're Dawn in black now, eh? We got maces. Dude, an average person in this world has to live such a miserable life. What is this? No chess? We can't have fun? Oh. Man. Jesus. The horny <laughs> we are a clearing house, huh? This is not Peter Bellish's establishment. Okay. Sick tat. All right, Lancel. So these people are chosen by the High Sparrow himself? They don't seem like good people. Oh no. Sir Loris of House Tyrell, you have broken the laws of gods and men. Who do you think you are? Justice. Okay. What about your sins, brother? Why is my brother in a cell? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't order it. We both know who did. She's jealous you're not hers anymore. Arresting my brother hmm. is her revenge. Aren't you and mother getting along? <sighs> He's very slow to catch on. Just a kid. Yeah. Oh, my sweet. And here Thank we go. You. Change of tone. I can't bear to think of my brother locked away in some grimy cell. I'll set him free for you. Do you promise? Mm. Okay. I demand that Sir Loris be freed now. Did I arrest him? Well, no. <laughs> but y you arm the faith militant. You're the king. I'm sure if you speak to the High Sparrow, he'll release the poor boy. Okay, uh, what's the point? Bro, imagine cutting off the king. His holiness is praying. <laughs> Give the order and we'll clear out this rabble. You'd be sending them to meet the gods that they love. What's he gonna do? Born of 
Oh my god. They're dragging him on the streets. We'll find another way. Okay. Cersei is very much like setting up her own faction here. I'm going to speak with the High Sparrow. Are you? When? I don't know. You don't know? He was praying just now. This poor kid's just getting dragged around. Will you come back later? Nah, brother. You're in the doghouse. I need to be with my family, Your Grace. Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. A bastard by some tavern slut. Alright, I'll we'll talk about the goat like that. Way. I should have given you a son. But you'll hide away your I'm daughter, sure. okay. Who's then? I gave you nothing but weakness. She's cool, bro. And deformity. Her father's the Lord's chosen king. And her father's blood runs through her veins. I need you. You only need faith, my king. And you, my lady, what do you need? To serve my lord. Stop looking at John. <laughs> lord Smallwood. What a name. Unfortunate name. Well, they haven't heard of you either. But we need men and they have some. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you solid on this next one? Not him. I know. I'm sorry, but we need men and supplies. And Reese Bolton's the warden of the north. Murdered my brother. We swore to be the watchers on the wall. Yeah, um, this is a tough position. Yeah. I wouldn't sign it. It's his own pride versus the lives of the men he's leading. It's disgusting, but... Oh my, get, get her out. Apologies, my lady. Winterfell was your home once. Don't you want to chase the rats out of it? Sure he does. Castle Black is my home now. Come. Let me show you what you're fighting for. You're gonna show me some vision in the fire. Okay. No visions. No magic. Just life. Okay. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Listen. He's not falling for this. John. John. John, come on. Do you feel my heart beating? John. There's power in you. You resist it and that's your mistake. Embrace it. For the Lord of Light made us male and female. Two parts of a greater whole. John. In our joining, there's power. Power to make life. Power to make light. And power to cast shadows. I don't think Stannis... Cast some shadows, all right. Then we shouldn't tell him. I can't. Why? I swore a vow. Okay. I loved another. There we go. The dead don't need lovers. Only the living. <laughs> I know, but I still love her. That's right, step back. He was fighting for his life over there. Let's go. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Oh, listen, you can't be saying that to him. But how'd she know to say it, brother? Can't be, can't she be said saying no that. magic. What was that? Magic. It's manipulation. Magic, nope, it's manipulation. She watched the first four seasons. Mm hmm. God, I love that line. Can't replace her. I know Mother didn't want to bring me. Why'd you say that? She told me I don't want to bring you. Terrible, Mom. She shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Are you ashamed of me, Father? When you were an infant, the Dornish trader landed on Dragonstone. His goods were junk, except for one wooden doll. He'd even sewn a dress on it in the colors of our house. No doubt he'd heard of your birth and assumed new fathers were easy targets. I still remember how you smiled when I put that doll in your cradle. How you pressed it to your cheek. By the time we burnt the doll, it was too late. I was told you would die. 
or worse, the grayscale would go slow. Let you grow just enough to know the world before taking it away from you. Everyone advised me to send you to the ruins of Valyria to live out your short life with the stone men before the sickness spread through the castle. I told them all to go to hell. I called in every maester on this side of the world, every healer, every apothecary. They stopped the disease and saved your life. Because you did not belong across the world with the bloody stone men. You are the Princess Shireen of House Baratheon. And you are my daughter. That's sweet. That's such a good Stannis scene, man. For him and Shireen. A feather? You see that, by the way? Who's that? I might find you here. Your Aunt Lyanna. My father never talked about her. I saw her once. I was a boy, living with your mother's family. Lord Went held a great tourney at Harrenhal. The last two writers were Barristan Selmy and Rhaegar Targaryen. When Rhaegar won, everyone cheered for their prince. I remember the guys laughing when he took off his helmet and they saw that silver hair, how handsome he was, until he rode right past his wife, Nadia Martell, and all the smiles died. He rode past his wife, and he lay a crown of winter roses in Lyanna's lap, blue as frost. How many tens of thousands had to die because Rhaegar chose your aunt? Yes, he chose her. And then he kidnapped her and raped her. Where are you going? King's Landing. King's it's been Landing. a while. Cersei sent for me. He can't leave me here. I know how hard it is to live with people you despise. I think he's going to find trouble if, if he goes back to King's Landing. for long. Stannis Baratheon garrisons at Castle Black. He'll march south to King's Landing before the winter snows block his way. But first, he has to take Winterfell. Mm hmm You don't know that. I do. A betting man would put his money on Stannis. As it happens, I am a betting man. And if you're right? Stannis takes Winterfell. He rescues you from the most despised family in the north. Grateful for your late father's courageous support of his claim, he names you Wardeness of the North. Mm-hmm. But I... I wouldn't... And what if you're wrong? What if Stannis never attacks Winterfell, or he does, and the Boltons defeat him? Then you will take this Bolton boy, Ramsay... Play both sides. I return before too long. You'll be strong without me. Okay, dude. Sorry, Igloo. Not in the goddamn catacombs, bro. Will be yours. Do you believe me? Ned's throwing up, bro. I expect I'll be a married woman by the time you return. <laughs> he needs like an attachment. Uh <laughs> Breakfast. Hmm. That would have been a shit way to die. As far as I've seen, they're all shit ways to die. What about you? What shit way would you choose? In my own keep, drinking my own wine, watching my sons grovel for my fortune. How do you want to go? In the arms of the woman I love. Okay. She want the same thing. I don't know what she wants anymore. The captain of that ship. What was he? Bravosi? Pentoshi. What's to stop him from docking down the coast and telling the locals that Jamie Lannister's in Dawn? A bag of gold. And I bet he swore all kinds of oaths to get it. But you won't be around if he breaks them. He might have been cooking. Oh, well. How many you count? Four. How many do you think you can take? One, if you slow. <laughs> Damn. Spotted. <laughs> Who are you? Cooper. This is Darnell. <laughs> You're from King's Landing. Our ship capsized in the night. We managed to swim ashore. Thought the sharks would get us. There are no sharks in Dorn. <laughs> Wow. 
Source in the sun. Now. Well. <laughs> oh. The force shadowing with the knife, man, that's insane. Yep. <laughs> oh. Ah. Dude, let's go. Holy shit. <laughs> Alright, got this? They're not ready for the left hand. <laughs> Brown in the background just like running away. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Nice rolling. Come on. You're gonna have to face worse than this. Oh! <laughs> nice catch. I think he just fo found a new way to cook. That dude was probably so confused. <laughs> like, what is his hand made out of? <laughs> nice move. Luck. You had a wonderful teacher. True. <laughs> Man's gonna parry with his fake hand. That's awesome. First, we need to bury these bodies. Do you know how long it'll take us to dig all those holes? I can't dig very well with one hand. <laughs> Not at all, really. Damn. Making him do the dirty work. Who's... Who's this? Mama. Hmm. Nim? Obara? Will it be war? Prince Doran will weep for your father, but nothing else. We must avenge Oberyn ourselves. Without mm. Doran, we have no army to march against the Lannisters. We don't need an army to start a war. Queen Cersei loves her children. And we have one of them. You may okay. have a problem. What? A ship's captain who found me in Plankytown claiming he had information to sell. He oh. told me he smuggled Jamie Lannister into Dorne. Why would you admit that? You must choose. Doran's way and peace, or my way and war. I think okay. it's a pretty easy choice. I'm with you, always. Nim? Obara? When I was a child, Oberyn came to take me to court. I'd never seen this man, and yet he called himself my father. My mother wept, said I was too young and a girl. Oberyn tossed his spear at my feet and said, Girl or boy, we fight our battles. <laughs> but the gods let us choose our weapons. My father pointed to the spear and then to my mother's tears. <laughs> I, is she cool? I made my choice long ago. <laughs> Just being annoying. You might toss him overboard. Thank you. Who are you? Your captor. Do you have wine? No. The second question. Can't sleep without wine. And stay awake. You're going the wrong way. <laughs> My sister's in Westeros. I'm not taking you to your sister. You said you were taking me to the Queen. I am. Mm. Queen Daenerys Targaryen. She's the Queen I serve. Serve. <laughs> uh, what a waste of a good kidnapping. <laughs> So happens I was heading there myself. What business would you have with a queen? Gold and glory. Oh, and hate. If you'd ever met my sister, you'd understand. Fair. So, oh, a high-born knight from the north of Westeros, down on his luck in Essos. Oh? Dragon epaulets, bare sigil breastplate. Your Jorah Mormont. Well, that didn't last long. I have to ask. You were spying on her, weren't you? It's all coming back to me. I was drunk through most of the small council meetings, but it's all coming back. <laughs> you passed notes to Varys's little birds. You think Daenerys will execute me and pardon you? <laughs> I'd say the reverse is just as likely. 
It's putting the gag back on? No. Okay. God damn. I'm happy enough from up here. <laughs> what? I was thinking about all the times your brother made me go with him down from the Red Keep into the streets of King's Landing. Why? We like to walk among the people. We like to sing to them. He sang to them. Yes. I don't believe that. <laughs> Not that brother. Ah, okay. I made sure no one killed him. And I collected the money. Well, you'd like to see how much you could make. He was good? He was very good. And what did you do with the money? Well, one time he gave it to the next missile down the street. One time he gave it to an orphanage in Flea Bottom. One time we got horribly drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Sebastian. Sing a song for me. Your Grace. Your grace, today is the traditional start of the fighting season. I do not recognize this tradition. Traditions are the only thing that will hold this city, your city, together. He's got a point. Them, former slaves and former masters have nothing in common. Nothing but centuries oh my of mistrust God. and resentment. Where are they going? I can't promise this is the answer to all our problems, but it's a start. <laughs> oh! Was that the same person? The girl that was cuddling the unsullied yeah. guy. Yeah. Holy shit. God damn it, bro. He's being baited. They're gonna jump your the ass. Crocodile tears. But why? Ah, oh, man, they're about to die. Come on, formation boys. You got this? No! There's too many of them. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. God damn. There's so many of them, Jesus. No. Come on, you got this. Gotta live, man. Gee, dude, how many? Give him the sauce. Oh. Yes. <laughs> you can't stop him. No. Dude. No. Dude, no. Whew. Please tell me he's still chilling. Oh my god, bro. They got ran up on. That pool of blood under him. That is a brutal cliffhanger. Oh my god. I was waiting for it. Because the episode's called The Sons of the Harpy. Yeah. We don't see Marine until like the final five, ten minutes. And they hit us with a sweet little story between um, Sir Barristan and Rhaegar. That's messed up. Yeah, things ain't things ain't going well in Marine. Holy shit. The sons yeah. of the harpy. At first they were just pretty small scale, but they really showed out the attacks. this episode. Yeah. The attacks are going more violent. 
Uh, I can only imagine how much more loyalty that faction got after the public ex- execution by Daenerys. And just more, I mean, it's just been a growing, uh, not necessarily resentment, but like disorder as Definitely. I guess more and more feel to the mm-hmm. fire. Yeah. Yeah. Just things have not been going well. We see her like not caring about the city's traditions, which I think even if her personal morals won't allow it, she disagrees with the fighting pits. It's I, she's not wrong with it. Just kind of making use of like, or like, I guess profiting off like just human lives and that majority of people who will see the fight in the fighting pits are just going to die. But there is a point I think we, and we have discussed this before about like how some people, the only way some people can make a name for, for themselves uh, and find some mod- like uh, some sense of like success. But like it, the, the tradition aspect of it is also really interesting because your, f- your first Daenerys definitely has her own values. But like your first thought, like your first thought priorities should be keeping the city from like eating itself, consuming itself, uh, like or just revolting until she's dead. And if you're just establishing order by putting people to the axe or through essentially annexing them with your troops, I mean... (laughs) They kind of showed like how quickly they can they, they be, could be dealt with this episode with that act. That's actually really, really bad. Mm-hmm. I was going to curse there by I held myself back for your sake, Corey. Thank you. <laughs> Give you less work. <laughs> so goddamn, goddamn. They they really. I mean. We don't have a confirmation, but the fact that Sir Barrison didn't get his throat slit gives me some some value of uh, peace. That he, okay, he's all right, but still that nasty cliffhanger. Uh but yeah. Let me, let me quickly go down the rest of the episode because there's some other interesting stuff. Uh Cersei in King's Landing. She. I did not expect the High Sparrow to take this sort of direction. He seemed like a pretty chill dude. But if he's the one kind of leading these people, like the, the faith militants, equipping them, people he trusts and says, hey, we're going to just kill the sinners now. Um, I didn't think it was going to be that violent of an approach. I mean, they were kind of just, I mean, I guess they did like, like Gaga guy, like the, the high, the high septum, whatever his title was for in the, in the brothel. But like, that's, that's a pretty drastic turn. I'm like, <sighs> the high sparrow is no longer someone I vibe with. They made yeah. this dude seem super, like, super, like, super chill and holy but yeah his morals i can't disagree like i can't agree with especially the people he's targeting uh we're going after loris was a crazy play mm-hmm. I feel really bad for yeah. tom and like being put in the middle of it and emotionally manipulated i think tom has begun to realize like yeah th- this king this king shit ain't as fun as he thought he actually has to make decisions now and I I hope he comes to realization that he's just kind of being used at this point. But he's he's still a child and also him getting roasted on the streets kind of messed up. Not his fault his parent his his parents siblings. Uh, his parents were siblings. He's just a dude. Yeah. But yeah, Cersei is very much it feels like she's establishing a like a, f- a faction that serves her. Uh and kind of cleaning house on her her enemies sending Mace. Sir Loris and Marjorie's father 
uh was i forget his name what is mace his name? tyrell mace mace tyrell like uh, off to um to, uh, to go negotiate with the iron bank and bravos he that man is not coming back <laughs> uh then again I, and i also don't know i mean if he were to come back i don't know how long of a journey that is but also d- d- doubled by like sir loris being locked up she's very much declaring war so that's that is not fun and we also we've also seen uh some of jamie's feelings this episode i did not know he felt that strongly i understand Tyrion murdered their father but and i i can understand him for being angry perhaps it was an overreaction but there was never a sense of, hey, I like this dude from any of his children. No, I mean, like, nowhere did I see a, like, uh, some semblance of, uh, like, or representation of love towards Tywin. From any, like, from Cersei or Jaime, in addition to Tyrion. It was always them butting heads. I understand they could still love, have some sort of, like, like love towards them, but st- that is not the impression i have i got do you remember he didn't when he didn't Cersei care about his kids had mm. well she chewed jamie out and he decided he was gonna go on this expedition to uh, rescue their daughter i feel like mm-hmm. the words she hit him with about Tyrion and him killing their father i feel like those are really affecting his perception and character at this point jamie needs to not J- J- Jamie needs not be a better so woman in his life <laughs> yeah I mean I, you can say whipped but it, it, like the shoe fits but god damn you really love her this much what, what do you see in her like it, it feels like he's just I, doing it's this probably to, just what he knows I mean TBH. my man needs to know uh, needs to know something else it was cool that they crossed um they passed by Tarth. I thought that was a cool nod. Mm-hmm. But he, he needs he needs a woman like Brienne in his life. But uh, interesting. I, I like the duo. I'm loving the duo between uh Jamie and Braun. I love that he, how he, he found out how to fight to some degree by catching a sword in his uh false hand his metal hand still dangerous because it could like just kind of skirt the outside if he doesn't perfectly align it within the the little open grass semi open grasp mm-hmm. that the hand makes it could just go in it just go i it could be deflected outward sure but it could also just kind of go inward and cut him they should so have designed it's, it's, it like it's a, a lego hand <laughs> yeah I'm telling you that my man needs a little, like a little hot swappable attachments for his hand. <laughs> like give him a little parry shield, you know, yeah. or a gay sh- Let Listen, like uh, they give him like a so like uh, give him a sword prosthetic, man. I've give said him this a before hand so he can help Bron dig. <laughs> yeah. Or a but battle the, hand, so, like you said. To row. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So some fun scenes with that. Um, the Night's Watch. I it, it is very interesting to see this sort of conflict with, like, with uh, John about his duty to his family versus his duty as Night's Watch commander. This is something we talked about. I talked about Great Lanes last episode. Uh but we we see him continuously like battling those two and he's choosing to put aside his pride or his own personal vendettas as Ned Stark's child uh, because I'm sure he uh, you know he wants revenge against Bolton the Boltons I should say for what they did but he is choosing to swallow all of that and put the Night's Watch first and request troops and that man has to sign his name on that document and whatever that document reaches uh, Bolton they, they, they're they gonna see that and that's just disgusting 
because it, it's just like it's it's almost like an admission like i don't know uh but i'm i'm glad i'm glad my boy resisted the false temptation it is very weird very weird that she happened to utter the same lines as uh as egret did you know nothing john snow yeah. Really weird. Bet, really weird. So that's such a weird coincidence. The Lord of Light's magic doesn't exist. It is very listen. There's there's ma- there's magic and manipulation. I'm fine with magic. I disagree with how it's being used. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh I like the scene we got with Shireen. And Stannis. Stannis desperately needs some more positive scenes in his life. That was my favorite scene uh, of the episode, by the way. Yeah, I do not understand why Stannis' wife is so terrible to their daughter. Because and, and anything we've seen from Shireen is she, she's she's cool as hell, man. She's teaching a man. She's teaching people how to read. Yeah. Listen. She, yeah, she doesn't need to be defined by her. What it like? What what what, what they Gray call scale. it? Stone scale, grayscale. Like, come on, ignore that shit. Like, you're embarrassed of that? Okay, she saw she taught Sir Davos how to read. That shit is cool as hell. She she's goaded in my book. You picked up on how she got it, right? No. So the toy that Stannis bought for her, it had the uh, the gray scale on it. So when she pressed it against her cheek, that is what what that is how she contracted it. Ah, oh, I missed that. Mm-hmm. I think I was catching up with some stuff. I was like rewriting some stuff in my notes. I was listening to the story, but I guess I I missed that part. Damn. To a f- that merchant, they need a call back and get a refund. <laughs> need a call uh, back and get him to bring more dolls as a guise to hanging him. Yeah, we loved your dolls, but my daughter wants more. Uh, what else? Ooh, we saw o- Oberyn's daughters this episode. That's really cool. And we got further confirmation on the vengeance they're seeking They st- and how they strictly named uh Marcella so we have like I, I had that off theory that it was potentially Cersei behind it but I also like double back on that saying it was she wouldn't joke around her about that's the one thing she wouldn't like joke around about so we see the plot coming together the fact that they would subvert their king though is interesting even if they are part of like the royal family that's a bold move um besides that Sansa and Peter in the in the catacombs you know the honored family grounds perfect place to kiss I get I get they're like slightly out of that but still like disgusting it was it will always be disgusting uh but we do see the vision of play of Peter playing both sides, whether like to where he but he he'll come out on top either way, either marry Ramsey or let Stannis run through, and then uh, there's still going to be a Stark in Winterfell anyway. So he's slimy. Um, I hope his visit to King's Landing will be his last. I I I don't think Cersei has any good intention by inviting him there so that was that's I mean just basing how like how they cleaned out his brothel it's his place of establishment you're kind of attacking him in like in the crossfire of that so I can't imagine she has any good plans for him either so that is left to be seen and then we have a little fun scene with Jorah and Tyrion and I'm I really like how to quickly 
Tyrion sniffed Jorah out. Very deductive. Mm-hmm. The backhand was undeserved, but that man called air like him 100%. T- Tyrion is too smart for his own good. But I don't know if... I don't know what the state Marine's going to be by the time they finally get there. So I feel like if the, cape, the situation gets worse, Danny kind of needs people. Granted, I don't know what Tyrion has to offer in, in like the drastic state the city is in. But another arm or another sword to kind of act in, in Marine. I mean, she desperately needs someone like Jorah back. But that is left to be seen. Great, really good episode. I need to see what happens to Sir Barristan and Grey Worm. So we're going to go straight into the next one, right, boys? If you and Blake want. Please. Please. So my favorite scene of the episode was <laughs> uh, Melisandre and John interacting. Oh. Because uh-huh. it's the first real time that they have a conversation. Oh, the conversation was in, like of interest to you. I see. I see. Yes. Not, not mm-hmm. the booby touch. Mm-hmm. No. Okay. The cameraman was was going going wild yeah, there yeah, for that sure. Close up. Uh, and then also the Stannis Shireen because I feel like Igly always complains like the history of lore Stannis to the show Stannis don't match like that's Stannis. That is, that is Stannis. And, you know he, he's a bitter old guy, but he loves his daughter. And at at the end of the day, he's more mad at himself than he is like towards his daughter Mm -hmm. about the grayscale thing yeah he obviously isn't exactly he's not known as westeros's greatest communicator (laughs) yeah i mean it's it's commander not communicator um Mm -hmm. so anywho those are my two favorites and i think you already said that the stannis scene was your favorite too Corey. right yes Mm mm-hmm if you guys enjoyed this episode, hit that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss when these uploads go live every Sunday. Don't miss it. We also have four weeks early access available on Patreon right now. So check out that link in the description below. There's also a link to join our free Discord and links to check out all our social media. So hit all those. We'll see you guys in the next one. See ya. See ya.